Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Episode 498, Soul Not For Sale podcast. Let me start out with a question. It's Joe Rogan, it's Patrick Bet David. Patrick Bet David brings up something that I think a lot of people need to start looking at a lot deeper. You, 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 we kinda see it, but we kinda don't. And here's the thing, here's the question I'm gonna ask you. Who was your hero when you were a kid? Who did you see as a hero? Who were the heroes? You know, let's not even just like a lot of people probably say their dad. Maybe you're going to say your mother. You know, great, great answers. But who were the heroes in the media? It was people like the Terminator, Rambo, depending on how young you are, you know, Michael Jordan, right? Wayne Gretzky, possibly. You know, heroes, they were masculine people, people who could do us, who had absolute incredible skill and talent, people who had very muscular physiques, people who could defend civilians and their loved ones with as much force as their enemies deemed necessary, people you could look up to and If you did try to become like them, you would, at the very least, become an in-shape, decently integral man, or woman even. But who are the heroes of today? Who are the heroes today? I want you to just, I'm not going to say them, but picture who are the heroes of today, right? Very interesting topic. Uh, Patrick Bet David breaks down, you know, the problem with the heroes of today. And I think you know where he's going with this. With woke culture sweeping throughout the nation, uh, our heroes are not looking that great. And the question really is, past what Patrick is going to talk about, is what does that do to us? More importantly... Because I asked who was your hero when you were a kid. What does that do to the next generation? Let's go into that clip. Before I do, you know I have to bring you to IamCoachColin.com. And this is our newest design right here. It is the Public Enemy number 1 shirt. If you don't know who this gentleman is, he is the cricket connoisseur. He is the inspiration for Dr. Evil. I've heard that. I don't know if anybody else has heard that. I've actually heard that, and it makes perfect sense. You can grab that at IamCoachColin.com. Also, we have the Certified Pure Blood T-shirt. This is for those of you who survived the experiment, who got through it, who ducked and dodged and sacrificed your jobs. This is your Certificate of Achievement. Go ahead and grab this at IamCoachColin.com. And also, we have the Great Resist shirt. Do not eat crickets. Do not trade in your gas car for an electric car that can be controlled by anyone who deems where you're going unsafe. Because you know that's what's going to end up happening, straight up. Join the Great Resist instead. Crickets have parasites, I guarantee you. Look into it, guys. I'm not kidding. Uh, And also the Soul Not For Sale shirt, the original, the one that started it all. Get that all at IamCoachColin.com. We have T-shirts for men and women, tank tops for men and women, and hoodies like this one right here, all at IamCoachColin.com. If you want 10% off, this is what you do. You put in the discount code area, IamCoachColin. That's it. I don't need you to give me your email. I don't need you to sign up for this or that. You just... Put that in, you get 10% off, no questions asked, big purchases, small purchases. Now remember, it is all capital letters, it is all one word, and there's one L in the name, Colin, gets you your 10% off. And if you've done that already with us, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are much appreciated. Now let's get into this clip. So people ask the question, so what do you think is wrong with America? What do you think is wrong with the world? What do you think is wrong, da, 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 da. all these conversations you have, and it's like, you're at the cigar lounge, you're the combo, okay. I think we have a hero making machine problem. I think we have a very big hero making machine problem. And what I mean by hero making machine problem is this. Kids are confused who's a hero today. When you and I were 14 years old, who was a hero, Joe? Think about it. When you were 14, when you were 18, when you were 25, who was a hero? If we go back, like when I was 14, oh man, I was, what year is it, 30 years ago, 1992, 1993, who was a hero? Michael, you know? Jordan, sports, 
billionaires, life of the rich and famous, mm -hmm. you know, guys like that. It's just a very innocent, that's a hero. You know, go, one day when I grow up, I want to be blah, 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 right? Today, the hero is the victim. Today is the hero, the person that's going through a mutilation and the parents support their seven-year-old going through it. What a hero Dwayne Wade is. You know, what a hero, you know? And the mother or the child is saying, why don't you just wait till this kid is 18 years old to do it? No, we're leaving the state of Florida because Florida is not allowing us to do what our kid wants to do. That's a hero today, Joe. A hero today is the person that dresses up as a syringe, goes as a show, late night show, and is getting people to take the vaccine. That's a hero today. That's, that's what they've painted as a hero today. And the longer these guys control who the hero is, kids are going to be confused. We're not recognizing the parent that is doing what he's doing with his kids and doing a hard job of raising his kids. It's not easy being married. Marriage is very hard. You and I are both married. It's not easy being married. It's a very hard job to be married. And you have kids and you have self-interest and you have your own selfish desires and you want to be a good dad and you want to be a good husband and you want to do any. That's not easy stuff to do. But guess what? Who are we turning into a hero? Not, not the father that's taking his responsibilities and doing his part. That's a boring story. Let's not turn that person into a hero. Let's not turn a person into a hero that's fighting the establishment. That's ah, not the hero. That's the villain. That's the villain. Joe's the villain. You're not a villain. You're a hero. So unless if we get back to selling the dream, like when I watch Ron DeSantis, I ask myself, sell the dream. Sell me America. Sell me why this is the greatest country in the world. We're no longer selling the dream. We're not selling the bigness. It's nightmare. It's confusion, it's gaslighting, it's dividing, and selling people into heroes that are not necessarily heroes. George Soros, uh, to, to see what he's done with his life and what he's doing with his money right now, where he's investing it, this guy wants to change the way a lot of things are being done. He wants to go from America, you know, as long as I have my money and I got influence around the world versus seeing what America is doing, that's not a good thing for me. You know, if, if you study Hitler, and I don't know if you've read Mein Kampf or not, or if you've gone through it or not, the translation in you know, English. You see how this guy used to go to local debates just to watch. He would go to local stuff that was going on, small little things local that they're voting for. You know, this guy was like a big architecture guy. He liked buildings. He liked stuff like that. And, and you're kind of like, okay, so what was this guy's motive? What was he doing? You know, what was he getting rid of? He realized later on, you know, people can't believe in God. That's a big enemy, Joe. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not debating Christianity or religion, specifically like a God. We can't recognize people that believe in God. That's risky. You know, we can't. We can't really be doing that because if people believe in God, they believe future is bright. You know, people who have faith are typically like, I have faith. What is a main basis of faith? I think everything's going to work out. No, I don't want you to think that. I want you to think it's the end of the world. Climate change is coming. I don't want you to think everything's going to work out. I want you to think the future is scary and you need us. And we're here to save you. That's kind of how they're pitching their savior mindset. God-like fancied myself as a sort of a God. And now that it's become reality and I'm experiencing it. So these are not people that are sitting there saying, well, that guy keeps talking about God a little bit too much, man. That's not good. We don't need people to believe in God. We need people to believe in government. That's a scary thought. So for me, I think, you know, when, when we have the debate with religion, uh, it's, a, it's a great debate to have, you know, with, with Muslims or, you know, seven day or... Scientology, there was a year, 2003, I was an atheist for 24, 25 years of my life, and I'm going out there trying to find out what's really going on. I'd go read Dianetics, I'd go read all this stuff on, you know, LDS and, you know, Gordon B. Hinckley or Cleon, you know, all these guys you're reading on. Okay, 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 I see this here, I see this here. There's a place for religion debate. Let's do that, no problem. But for me, I want as many people around me to try to exercise whatever faith they're going whether you're a Christian, Catholic, you know, you're LDS, you're this, you're that. I'm a non-denominational Christian today, right? We need more people to have faith, to see that future looks bright. Doesn't mean we don't need to be skeptical. Doesn't mean we don't need to be, you know, only the paranoid survive. That's a quality in business you need. But I think there's a bit of a confusion right now with who we're turning into heroes. And the more we do that, we don't know who we want to be when we grow up. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Shit, I don't know. People who bitch a lot, whine a lot, cry a lot do these TikTok videos of eating, doing all this stuff. I, they're getting all, they're getting famous. That's what I'm going to be. Those are clowns. That's not a hero. 
but that's who we're turning into heroes. So how do you think ESG factors into that? ESG factors in it that they get to dictate. You have to, you know, do the LGBTQ Explain stuff. Explain ESG to people. Okay, so in, for, for example, Hollywood. What's Hollywood going through right now? Oscars came out. I don't know if you saw the structure on Oscars. Have you seen what it is to be nominated for an Oscar today? Yeah. That you have to have a portion of your actors be either disabled, black, part of the LGBTQ, the workers behind closed doors, da 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 all this stuff that they have to be part of the, the, the sect to get funding or to be nominated and all that stuff. Who gives a shit that I have to do that? But people do it to get a high score. If you get a high score, you get more money, you get rated better. You're, you... How do they get more money? Okay, so if, if I'm a... Um, if I'm a, uh, a State Street or Vanguard or XYZ company, okay, the, the more you're growing, you're going to need to raise capital. You're going to need people to invest into your company, whether you go in public or it's pi- private or you're raising debt. There's only a few companies that are behemoths to go and get money from those guys. If you want money from those guys, you have to follow their guidelines. If you don't have a high ESG score, DEI score, they're simply not interested in your company. Why do you think they're implementing this? Why do I think they're implementing this? Uh, uh, in regards to uh, in regards to what? Why do you think they're doing? You know, with the uh, indoctrination, the grooming. Well, the way the, they're just laying it out with ESG scores. Why do you think they're doing control? That? I control what you want to do. I can try dictate the terms. That's very very well said. Um, I let, I let that run a little too long, a little longer than I was supposed to, but. It's perfectly said. I control the terms. And by what he's saying in Hollywood, when we go back to that whole, you know, who's your hero? It seems like whoever whoever has a high ESG score gets put into the eye of the media. Now, does that also happen with the NBA? Does it also happen with the teams? Does it also happen with artists? Does it also happen with individual players? You know, how far does this ESG thing go? Because nowadays it seems as though some of the people who are in the media's eye in terms of like artists, it seems like they have these scores to keep up as well. Or maybe the record company or the holding company that owns the record company, you know, maybe Sony owns something and then or maybe Sony is the the top company. The subsect is this record company, and now this artist has to do a certain thing for their ESG score to be higher. I'm not sure, but it seems like it by what he was being well, what was being said just now. And also, Patrick said something before Joe cut him off. He said, "What do you think? Uh, the indoctrination, the grooming? He's like, he's like, what are you what are you talking about? Like, which part of it are you talking about?" So, I wish he went down that rabbit hole, but yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm touching on right now, because when we talk about the heroes, who are the heroes of today? Well, I mean, you know, I bring up Michael Jordan. We have Michael Jordans. We still have a Michael Jordan. LeBron James is like Michael Jordan. Kobe was like Michael Jordan. The thing about Kobe is he was really like Michael Jordan and then some. You'd see him wear suits. Yeah, he got caught up in a scandal or two, but you'd see him wear suits. You'd see him take care of his little girls. You'd see him be... You know, a good husband, except for that little scandal that went on, which he was exonerated of because that person, you know, they they had a lot of stuff going on, the person that was involved in that. But for the most part, you saw him act with integrity. You saw him keep himself together. But then he passes away. Randomly, of course. Sad, sad thing to have happen. But then who takes over from there? LeBron James. Now, he's a hero. He's big. He's masculine. But he also wears dresses from time to time. He wears skirts. He wears purses. So you see what I mean? Like he can, he's gonna get looked up to. But then that behavior is also gonna get looked up to. So now there's a generation of kids that are like, well, you know, if it's if it's high fashion, I can wear a dress. I guess so. Harry Styles, he's a hero. Logan Paul, there's some little kid looking up to Logan Paul right now. Logan Paul said he was into, and I won't get into it, but basically the heroes of today, they don't have much integrity. They don't have a, a, a whole lot of integrity. They do things that, that as a man right now, I wouldn't want my son to do. 
you know, if my son chose to dress a certain way, I would hope he was doing it because he just felt like it. But it seems like the heroes of today are doing it for money or doing it to be connected to that higher ESG score. You know? Dylan Mulvaney's a hero. I guess. You know, when Patrick talked about people on TikTok, there's people who act like NPCs. They act like video game characters for money. And they just sit there and do the bidding of whoever clicks and sends them money. You know, there's certain girls right now who are looking up to OnlyFans models, models as heroes. How deep does it go? There's streamers who just jump around and act like kids. They're grown men and they're jumping around acting like kids. And they're making a lot of money. Now they're heroes. You know, I say it all the time in regards to the black community. And it's not all of the black community because there's a lot of black people who have a lot of integrity. But the ones who we focus on the most have completely sacrificed integrity for the bag, which is money. You know? And there's a whole bunch of people under them who look up to them who think no matter what they see them do, they go, but they got the bag, but they got the bag, but they got the bag. And that is spreading. That's not just a black community thing. But I see it in the black community because I'm a black person. I, I, I watch the black community. I grew up, you know, with a black family. You know, it's just uh, it's interesting how everybody is starting to sacrifice integrity. Integrity is not even in the conversation anymore. You know, Hulk Hogan back in the day, he's old now, but his catchphrase was, eat your vitamins, kids. <laughs> and it was corny, and it was silly, but there was a whole bunch of kids that were eating vitamins because Hulk Hogan said so. He wanted to be big and strong, you know? I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting to see every single person, and there's a whole bunch of things attached to this that I can go into, but every single person who you could consider a hero today, you can go check a compilation. Every single one of them is worn a dress. I don't know why. doesn't really matter, but, you know. It's, it's not that dresses are terrible. It's just that integrity. You know, and I guess you can still, I guess you can wear a dress and have integrity. I guess. My wife does it all the time. But my wife does it all the time. You know? And I'm sure we'll have a daughter one day and that'll be her hero. You know? I don't know. It's just a very interesting conversation to have. Like, who are the heroes of today? We really embrace the victims. Victim mentality is something that's just like really focused on, really pushed for. It's like people want to be victims. They want to find something wrong with themselves so they can be a victim too, you know? It's not just that I'm overweight. It's that people are fat phobic. I'm oppressed. It's not, I'm not large. I'm oppressed. It's not fair, you know, it's and it goes deep and it keeps going like that. So who are the heroes of today? What are kids looking up to today? And is that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. Very interesting conversation to have. And I, uh, I, 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 am, I, I, I say to you, have that conversation. Ask your kids. If you have kids, ask them who are your heroes, you know? And when they say you, you say, okay, but like, who else? Who, who are you looking up to? Who have you been looking up to? Who are you aspiring to be like? What, 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 what kind of job do you think is good to have? What kind of career? You know, and if they say TikToker, you got to have a talk with them. <laughs> you got to. Even if they say YouTuber, I'm a YouTuber. Even if they say that, you got to have a talk with them. You know? I don't know. It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. Anyways, guys, like the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. It helps us so much, boosts us out of the shadow realm. And if you know someone who's looking up to weirdos who are who are in the media's eye, the rich and the famous, the false idols, send them this video and make them think about who they are making into a hero in their lives. Anyways, guys, that's it. Sold Not For Sale podcast. Other than that, I am out.